We are joined by Clayton Safey of the Wolverine. He is back from College Park, Maryland, where Michigan cut it a little close on Saturday. That was, I, you know, we've, we talked last week about that sandwich spot game. We've seen mm -hmm. Ohio State go into College Park the week before the Michigan game and struggle. We saw Michigan struggle with Illinois last year in that spot. Is it just... A, a function of the calendar or were there some, some things you, that, that you left that Michigan should be worried about? Well, you took a couple of my points. I was going to bring up that Maryland game for Ohio state in 2018. I was going to bring up Illinois last year. That's the first point I guess I will say is that a lot of people on the outside, including myself, obviously us covering it going into this week every year. Um, I feel like sometimes people get fixated at least early in the week on this team's coming off of this and this team's coming off of this. And, Whatever. And last year was a little more valid. You know, Blake Corum's status was, you know, in doubt and everything. And obviously he wasn't able to go much. But when you're internal and when you talk to these guys internally in the programs early on in the week, I mean, they've moved on. I mean, they moved on on the flight home that, you know, Blake Corum was talking about the film he's going to watch on the, the flight home, all that sort of stuff. So I guess I will say that for one is this is a completely different week. It's basically its own season in and of itself. Uh, secondly, you know, I, I do think one, you know, you got to be concerned maybe a little bit about a couple injuries in particular. I'm not too concerned based on what we've heard so far about Roman Wilson, who left the game after taking a shot to the head. Sounds like he should be uh, good to go. That was more precautionary than anything else. But J.J. McCarthy, a little bit banged up there as well. Didn't run much, didn't scramble much. Um, and you know, something with the knee there, I think, was from the Penn State game the week before. So you want all your horses, basically. And you're already not going to have all your horses because Jim Harbaugh is not going to be on the sideline. So it was a little bit of a lack of execution. I thought the secondary got burned a few times. Um, you know, you looked at there, – there was some grumbling. Uh, certainly there always is on the, the message boards and everything. But some of the play calling, you know, they, they go for two, um, you know, to make it – try to make it uh, 13, I believe it was. So there were just a few things here and there that I think people are a little bit concerned about. But – Usually in this game, big picture wise, I feel like teams play true to form um, rather than, you know, whatever happened the week before. You kind of throw it out. Uh, but this is a unique circumstance, certainly for Michigan without its its head coach. Well, and also the, the McCarthy thing, he's obviously much better when he can move around. That makes him a lot right. more dangerous to a defense. Uh, if he's not as mobile as he needs to be, what can Michigan do about that? Yeah, I mean, first, it, it does hurt a little bit, not only with the plays he makes. I mean, we all saw, especially early on in the year, when I think a lot of people were watching McCarthy a little bit more and seeing how big of a jump that he took from a year ago. But a lot of his plays, and I was tracking this on Sports Info Solutions early on in the year, but he was leading the country and right up there with Caleb Williams and a lot of the stats on broken plays, you know, plays when mm -hmm. it's not the route that was designed. It's Roman Wilson you know, going deep on a, on a short route and J.J. McCarthy, you know, motioning him to to go one way mid play, that sort of thing. Or Colston Loveland, we've seen some big touchdowns on plays like that. So it's it's that. Um, but it's also the run game. I think you got to respect J.J. McCarthy in the run game. They haven't run blocked as well as you would like this year. Just not the quite the push as, as a year ago or even the year before that. Not getting to the second level as much. And one thing you can do to you kind of help that out is make sure that one defender is always keying in on J.J. McCarthy. And then also he's just dangerous when he does run it, you know, not even just as a decoy. So those are, are where Michigan could be hurt there. Um, at the same time, I think some of his struggles in this game, he went 12 for 23. I don't think it was all because of his lack of mobility. There were just a few things where the offense was out of sync. Um, and I think, you know, he can certainly be the health that he's at, maybe even with a week more of rest. Um you know, and still play a pretty good game. So I, I think that's kind of where we're at on, on that front. But you, you would like a healthy J.J. McCarthy because, like you said, some of the things he does best are when he's on the move making those wild plays. So we know Jim Harbaugh won't be there, unlike this time last week mm -hmm. when there was a hearing planned, there was a, a, a thought at Michigan that, that he'd be back. Now they know what situation they're in. I was talking about this with Jesse Simonson on, on Saturday night because we were, we were wondering, you know, how much did what happened at the end of last week affect Michigan? Is it possible that them not having anything like piano dropped on, on them this week could make it a little bit easier? Well, I think so. And I think, you know, I mean, these guys have done a great job all year going back to the beginning of, 
handling distractions and just kind of, as Jim Harbaugh says, you wake up, you take care of business, whatever that is, you know, on that day, sometimes it includes an interview from the NCAA, as we heard was going on a week ago, um, or even in, during Penn State week. Uh, and then you go to bed, you wake up, you take care of business again the next day. They've done a really good job of that, but it's hard. It's impossible for that not to get to you a little bit. And maybe what we saw, it's obviously impossible to prove one way or the other, but maybe what we saw a little bit with the struggles at Maryland had to do with that. Um, as our Chris Ballas wrote after the game in his post-game column, though, if you can, with the NCAA breathing on your necks a little bit, this is the week to tell them, hey, give us a week. Back the hell off for a second here. Stop interviewing our players midweek <laughs> on Tuesday night after practice or whatever it is because we need our full focus. And I think that's probably fair to ask. Now, who can ask that? Maybe Jim Harbaugh. I don't know. He's got to cooperate. Um, but if you're you know, the leadership at Michigan, I think that is something to consider if that's allowed or whatever. I'm not an NCAA expert. Um, I would also think that with the Big Ten basically saying we've closed our investigation. Right. Which their their investigation was the NCAA's investigation and a sharing of <laughs> of material. Yeah. I would think that backs some people off. And I will just go with the if you've ever worked in an office scenario, it's the week of Thanksgiving. People gotta That's pick true. up their kids early from school on Wednesday. Like th there's a lot of stuff. That, that goes on there where they may get a, a reprieve from all of this stuff. And then it picks back up later in the year because, or, or early next year, because if the right. big 10 doesn't need to do anymore, if they're not under pressure to do something else, I don't know that they have to do anything right now, that the NCAA has to do anything right now. I agree. I mean, oh yeah, it's also a short week for these guys. They won't have class a couple of days, so that will, help in terms of their football preparation. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big week in, in many different ways. Um, and you're right. So the big 10 basically has said, you know, I've seen a couple confl conflicting reports on it, but basically that, you know, they have kind of backed off, like you said, um, because they got their guy, they got Jim Harbaugh sideline, right. the court hearings done, you know, they kind of reached that quote unquote settlement. So that would, I think be big for Michigan lack of distractions in a week that, you know, you, you gotta be locked in, you gotta be dialed in. Um, and, you know, it feels like these guys will be uh, from from kind of what you uh, have seen the last couple of years. They now know and they have that proof to themselves that they can go out and, and do this. They're favored this time. Yeah. Didn't mean anything for Ohio State the last two years. So you got to remember that if you're a Michigan fan, you know, you, you still got to go out and earn this win. But, um, you know, I feel like a, a full, fully focused team would it, would it would be a big help this week after what they've been through the last couple. So where where can Ohio State attack Michigan differently than they could? say a year ago yeah i mean i i think for one i i felt like this all year and i said it um that this secondary and even the pass rush unit i thought they did a better job in the interior last week than than you would have uh you know even hoped for and made some big plays there with the pressures um but kind of the past defense i think has been a little untested when you look at the quarterbacks they played uh, they haven't played very good, uh, many good ones. Um, you look at Hudson Card from Purdue. That was probably the best guy until they placed, uh, played against Talia Tagovailoa this past weekend, and he had some success. Um, so I think there's an opportunity there. Michigan's pretty thin at cornerback. I think they understand that. You have Will Johnson and Josh Wallace, the UMass transfer, who's you know he almost got burned again. He keeps getting bailed out by guys uh, either, either overthrowing or, or dropping passes against him, but there's an opportunity there. I think Michigan's going to do their best to try to take away Marvin Harrison Jr., but I would say it's a pass game. And Kyle McCord has played better as of late for Ohio State. He's still not C.J. Stroud or anything like that, but I think that's an opportunity for him to get the ball in Marvin Harrison's hands. Um, I think pass rush as well, JTT, some of those guys coming off the edge against Michigan tackles, specifically Carson Barnhart, who has really struggled this year, gave up five pressures and three quarterback hits just in this last game. He had to move from one tackle to the other. Uh, but Penn State, that was a big reason why they had to stop going away from the throw game there. So it was was him allowing three early pressures. So I think it's it's probably the pass game on either side. Um, but again, if, if Michigan can establish the line of scrimmage like they have in this game the last couple of years too, I think that's going to go a, a long way. And Ohio State's going to have to play their most physical opponent of the, se of the season. Uh, maybe Michigan will too, but that's going to come, you know, that's going to play a huge part. Let's talk about that offensive line because Ladarius Henderson, the left tackle, couldn't play against Maryland. And so Miles Hinton started for him, mm -hmm. and then he he went out with an injury, and that caused the the Barnhart move. What do you think that starting five looks like against Ohio State? 
Yeah, so Sharon Moore said after the game, and so did Drake Nugent, that Ladarius Henderson should be back for Ohio State. And basically, Nugent was a little bit more uh, adamant about it on his radio interview that I listened to. Um, so I would expect him to be at left tackle, Carson Barnhart back at right. And that was kind of the tea leaves I was reading, too, coming into this game, because usually Carson Barnhart will move over to the left side if he needs to. But they started out with him on the right, Miles Hinton on the left. Um which kind of told me, hey, this is a short-term move. We're not going to move Carson, you know, for one game or whatever. So that's huge. Um, you know, and like I said on some of the other injuries, Roman Wilson, expect him back. Michael Barrett, linebacker, was massive uh, that he came back in the game after hurting his shoulder. So they dodged a couple bullets, it felt like, last week. It feels like every year in that penultimate regular season game, they lose a couple guys. But I think they, they dodged a couple bullets. Well, it will be an epic game, another one that – this is only the third time in the series history that they're meeting undefeated championship on the line. And we, we saw it in 2006. We saw it last year. And here, here's another one. Uh, this is, this is about as big as it gets. It is. It doesn't get any bigger. Um, the whole college football world will be watching pressure on both sides. I know you could argue in you know, a one way or the other. I think, you know, we talked about it last week where now it's Sharon Moore that could potentially beat Ryan Day. And if Ryan Day wins, he will have beaten Sharon Moore and not Jim Harbaugh. So there's pressure there. But I mean, when the stakes are this high, just for a season in general, there's pressure. There's also pressure on the Michigan side. People are questioning their accomplishments as well. And Ohio State fans are certainly among that group. And you want to get bragging rights over them and not just bragging rights, but, you know, feels like in Ohio State fans' eyes, you got to win this game, and then that will help you validate the last couple of years too. So, every which way you look at it, it's massive. Um, and, and the winner plays a, a fantastic Iowa defense. The next, <laughs> as I say, Iowa defense, not a fantastic Iowa offense. No. By the way, Iowa, an underdog, early underdog against Nebraska on Friday. Um, and they're clinched, and they're eight and two. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's incredible. But I will say, you know, it doesn't feel like the loser is going to get a mulligan in this year's Michigan Ohio State no. game. It feel, but because of how many other good teams there are around the country, this feels do or die. Well, you you said it. The other good teams last year it was do or die too. And leaving that you know stadium in Columbus, no one in there uh, thought that Ohio State was going to get in the playoff. But they got a couple uh, you know nice breaks there at the end, and, and certainly Ohio State hung right there with Georgia. I think they were one of the top four teams. But it's just kind of the way it breaks. So. I agree with you. Uh, this year, it would have been the most ideal year for a 12-team playoff, but we got a four. Um, so I think the loser goes home, especially with the schedule. Ohio State played Notre Dame, had a tougher schedule, obviously, than Michigan. But um, I would not expect the loser to get in. So it's it's do or die, like you said, in, in that way as well. Cannot wait. I will see you on Saturday, Clayton. You'll be there? Okay, there we go. Let's go. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder... Subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.